Hello, I'm Mark Rossner. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco's Server Products Group. This video will be a live demo of CentOS 6.5 interactive installation on UCSM series using the generic OS DVD install image and the KVM virtual media. Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.5 installation is identical except for the logos. I'll do a quick look at service profile template that I have set up for the server I'm going to install. The template refers to a storage profile that configures the servers of virtual local disks. If you're not yet familiar with storage profiles and virtual local disk concepts for UCSM series, please first watch the configuration video that I have created entitled UCSM series virtual local storage. After that, we'll look at which driver disk images I need to extract from the master Cisco.com M series driver download. In order to install on the virtual local storage, we will have to insert the SNIC driver at install time. The ENIC driver is already part of the OS, but the one in there in the installer is downrev. So while we're at it, we might as well insert the latest driver at install time too. Finally, I'll do the live demo of the install procedure, during which I'll also mention some other gotchas and best practices. Okay, this is the UCS M series master ISO file that you download from cisco.com. You'll have to manually descend into there and extract the individual driver disk images. This is the driver disk version of the SNIC driver, DD, and the driver disk version of the ENIC driver. Both of those will be able to present early in the install time. These drivers each come in three formats, this driver disk format, there's an RPM format, and there's a source code format. However, this SNIC specifically will have to use this driver disk format. The ENIC, we'd have a choice because we could install it later because it's just an upgrade, but we might as well install it at install time. Okay, let's take a quick, quick look at the service profile template I'm using in this example. Here I have a template named a Linux template. It's not associated with any server pool, so I'll have to do one step at a time and instantiate the template in order to create a service profile and then do the association. I just wanted to quickly look at this storage tab and specifically this new LUN configuration, which is the virtual local storage feature. I'm using a storage profile that I previously created called one boot disk which specifies one disk size 50 gig that specifies a disk group policy, RAID 1 mirrored, which will be implemented at the chassis level. Once again, for more details about this, see the video that describes the concepts and the detailed configuration of the virtual storage feature. That's pretty much the only unique thing for M-Series. I do happen to have ETH0 and ETH1 going to A and B. There's nothing different here at all than B series and boot order so that I boot off the CD DVD first and then the local disk, which is the virtual local disk. Second, and I'm ready to do an interactive installation off of the DVD media. And that's about it. Let me go ahead and create a service profile from my template. I'll call it AAA CentOS 6.5. Okay, I now have a service profile. It's still not yet associated with a server because I didn't have a server pool defined in the template. Quick look at the, the LUN configuration here still, and I'm still set up to have a 50 gig boot disk for this specific service profile, though it's not actually yet configured since I still don't know what chassis I'm talking about. Okay, let me go ahead and associate the service profile with just some random server. Doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. Notice behind the scenes there, it's config. This is in real time and I'm not doing any edits at this second. And it's already almost configured and now it's already configured. So the M series association is much faster than the B series. Now I can look back and go look at the virtual local storage and see that there really is a LUN configuration state is applied, carved out of the chassis of whatever chassis I happen to have chosen. I think it was chassis one. 
Okay, I'm ready to install the CentOS 6.5 OS on the virtual local boot disk of this server. Let me invoke the KVM console and I'll be mapping the virtual media before I power it on. Okay, let me map the standard OS DVD for CentOS 6.5. Okay, just to verify that it's mapped and I'm ready to power this server on. In this example, I'm going to let it drop into the standard install without any special boot options, just to show you that it does not recognize that you have a boot disk unless I specify in the boot options that I have a driver disk. Okay, let me skip testing the media, and I'll be dropping into the graphical install. So here I've dropped into the graphical install. Notice as it tried to detect a local disk, it didn't find any because the installer hasn't been told there's a driver disk, so there's no drivers for the M-Series virtual local disks. There's nothing I can do at this point except exit installer, which will just cause me to reboot. I might as well just reset the server hard and start again. And when I get to the boot screen, I'll specify that I have a driver disk so that it asks me about it early in the boot process. So now I'm back on the initial boot menus again. All I have to do following the directions rather than just hit return is to hit the tab button so that I can add a boot option and the one I want to do just says DD, meaning I'm going to be supplying a driver disk. Please ask me about it. So way before I hit the real graphical installer, because I supplied the DD option at boot time, it asks me if I have a driver disk. Let me just say yes first. Tell it that it's going to be on SR0, which is the CD player, which is my virtual media map through the KVM. And at this point, it tells me to essentially eject my OS image and insert the driver disk image. So I can do that at this point. Eject the OS image, that's done, and map the driver disk image for SNIC CentOS 6.5. And now I can say OK. And notice I had a message that it will detect my disk hardware. Do I wish to load any more driver disks? I don't have to because the other piece of software that I need to update, which is for Enic, the Ethernet driver. There is a version already in the OS, and I could do the upgrade to my newer version later. But since I'm here, I might as well. So let me just say yes. Let me just say it's going to be on SR0, the CD media again. Now I can eject the SNIC driver disk and map the Enic driver disk and say OK. And it detects my Ethernet hardware. Do I wish to load any more driver disks? At this point, before I say no, I'm going to unmap the last driver disk and map again the main CentOS DVD image. OK, let's map that back. And then I can say no more driver disks and skip the testing of the OS media. Now I've fallen into the graphical installer again. But this time it found my UCSM series of virtual local disk. Let me just say discard any data since I'm starting fresh here. And I'm ready to continue the installation. There's nothing else really different here from any CentOS or Red Hat 6.5 install. I'll just move through quickly
and I've chosen to do the completely default partitioning. This will use the normal Red Hat or CentOS a built-in volume manager, and I highly recommend you keep that. We're not going to be doing any RAID using the software volume manager, except that later I could possibly add a new disk to this storage profile and have another disk where I could use the built-in volume manager to do RAID 0 concatenation and end up with a bigger root volume and then grow the root file system without using the built-in volume manager. That would be a lot more difficult. Make sure you don't uncheck any of these. It has copied RPM from driver disk 0 into a temporary directory and the RPM from driver disk 1 that we supplied earlier, both of those into a temporary directory. So make sure you don't uncheck any of those so it can actually install those drivers into the new OS that it's installing on disk. It has already installed those drivers into the install image that I'm using to do the installation itself. Now I can just continue and there won't be anything else special about this installation. Thank you for watching.